we cannot skip the general features of the uh, vertebrae in general. So uh, any vertebra uh, we expect to um, have uh, these things. So the typical vertebra, guys, when you say typical vertebra, that means um, um, must um, has these uh, like body uh, should also have the uh, arch here we call it vertebral arch because this is an arch right and you say arch it's composed from two parts the pedicle here and the lamina here that means you have pedicle here lamina here right so pedicle uh, anterior right connects to the body that means the vertebra again should uh, have the uh, body uh, vertebral arch including pedicles and lamini plus vertebral foramen for the spinal cord here right to protect the spinal cord and what else you also the vertebra should have seven processes processes that means something to protect the outside so you have a spinous process posteriorly two transverse processes one two three and it should let me raise these uh, things to show you the seven processes, right? This is a spinous process, two vertebral processes. That means we have three now till now, and you have uh, what we call it articular processes, a small process with a facet on it. This process, this is a process with a facet, and this is a process with a facet. You look into the uh, to the vertebra from above this is a video view that means these are superior articular process with a facet here superior articular process that means inferiorly if you flip the vertebra up you will get also two processes similar to those right we call them inferior articular processes right that means you have a uh, one uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven. That's below, right? So let me explain to you this, uh, what we call this pattern. We call it interlocking pattern. Interlocking pattern, it's a term used to uh, describe. Now you got idea about the general characteristic of the vertebra that it should have... Uh, superior articular process and inferior articular process so for example in t9 the inferior articular process articulates with the superior articular process of t10 the inferior articular process of t10 articulates with the superior articular process of t11 and so forth this the superior and inferior articular process they articulate with each other from the vertebra above and from vertebra below to lock that um, uh, the, to lock that uh, space there and form that uh, joint, right? Uh, so, um, if you uh, look in here, my friends, look at the game, the body, and we mentioned we have processes, and if you remember, we said here, look at the, let me erase it and remind you with this, Look at the body and you see these are bidicles, right? These are bidicles. So there is a notch here and there is a notch here and below as well. So look at the body here and look at the bidicle here. This is the bidicle in which there is a notch here and there is a notch here, right? So bidicles have notch superior vertebral notch very simple and inferior vertebral notch so the for example the uh, uh, say for this say it's t for example 9 and this is t 10 right so the inferior vertebral notch of t 9 and the superior vertebral notch of t 10 or here for example the inferior article the inferior vertebral notch of T10 and the inferior, no, sorry, the superior, the inferior of the inferior vertebral notch of T10 and the superior vertebral 
notch of T11, they you know are opposite to each other when they uh, when the vertebra above the other so they form like intervertebral foramen that means this foramen formed by these knots from the vertebra above and below by their knots the superior and the, uh, the inferior and superior one so they form the intervertebral notch so the spinal you know that the spinal cord in the vertebral foramen here this is the location of um let me erase it again and use another pin so you know this is the vertebral foramen and there is a spinal cord here with us here now there is a spinal nerves moves from here and from there on both sides so this point of a clavicle that have uh, that has sorry notch it creates a kind of intervertebral foramen through which the um spinal nerves you see here there's a spinal cord in the vertebral foramen and from the inter uh, from the vertebral foramen from the intervertebral foramen we we call it inter sorry why we call it intervertebral foramen because it's between the ver between the vertebrae right between this vertebra and this and so forth so they are intervertebral foramen so this intervertebral foramen uh, foramen sorry uh, uh, is an exit for the spinal nerve. You see the spinal nerve moves out, right? Um, here is like written vertebral canal. We call vertebral canal or vert vertebral foramen, right? I mean this. You can call it vertebral uh, foramen or vertebral canal. It's up to you. Now to the thoracic vertebrae. Uh, thoracic uh, vertebrae as you see here in this natural uh, thoracic vertebra here in this in this illustration when my friends can be classified uh, uh, depending on the articulation with ribs what does it mean when you say the thoracic vertebrae um, divided or classified according to their articulation with the rib that means we have to memorize the ribs and the typical and atypical ribs and how they articulated and then what I want to say now that we have a 12 thoracic vertebrae and again they are classified because of the related attachment to the ribs into typical and atypical again it's like ribs right so if you remember the ribs we classified them into typical uh, that was uh, ribbon from three to nine and a typical where the first two I mean one and two plus the last three that means 10 11 and 12 so uh, typical ver typical ribs here we talk about it just I'm trying to remind you you can go back to the beginning of the video anyway so that means there is a minus one here in which the thoracic vertebra the typical ones the typical ones from the second vertebra to the eighth vertebra right and the atypical the atypical is the just the first one and the last four that means 19 11 and uh, the 12 uh, vertebrae that means you have typical and a typical thoracic vertebrae and the typical from uh, the second to the eighth ones and the a typical um, is the uh, first one and last four we will understand i will show you how i will uh, let you understand why uh, the typical from second to eight and why the a typical uh, is the first one and last four but First of all, uh, let me uh, explain to you the general characteristics and features of the typical ones, the typical thoracic vertebra. If you go to the thoracic vertebra, if you look superiorly here, you know, this is the body, and these are bidicals, let me remind you, and these are lamina and or lamini and the spinous process transverse process superior uh, uh, articular uh, process and of course inferior you have the inferior articular process so you know these are general features for any uh, vertebra right that we see here but the thoracic vertebra the typical thoracic vertebra uh, uh, should um, has the body as you see here and the body 
is like medium size and it's like heart shape I mean you know the heart shape which is like um, approximately it's like the heart shape right and on each side if you look laterally yes this is the typical thoracic vertebra this is the body and it's like medium in size and it's like heart shape why heart shape because if you go down to the lumbar vertebrae the body is like kidney shape but if you go up to the cervical vertebrae the shape of the body is like flat and the brought from side to side okay let us leave it for now because i would like to focus today on the thoracic vertebrae the typical ones so hard shape medium size and on the lateral side of the uh, uh, body of the thoracic uh, vertebra you will see you have demi facets for articulation with the ribs you know that the ribs articulate with the just thoracic vertebrae that means we need on each side of the body two demi facets two demi facets one is up the upper one and a smaller one if you remember um, that uh, the rib for example say this is t4 uh, so if you have for example rib number five so rib number five will articulate here and so you know the rib has two the typical one right has two uh, uh, facets the upper one and lower one so the upper facet of the rib say this is rib number five right so it articulates with the um, vertebra above that means t4 and with the same number of vertebra here which is number five by its um, uh, inferior demi facet right so that means you understand why uh, if you go back also in this lecture you understand what i'm talking about and you know that you have large upper demi facet which is for articulation with the head of the rib of the corresponding uh, number for example rib number here is uh, this is thoracic vertebral number four that means this is the rib number four in which with two demi facets the lower one of the rib the lower the lower demi facet of the rib number four articulates with the upper demi facet of the t4 the same number right okay what about the upper demi facet of the rib uh, it would be with the vertebra above the three right anyway that means the rib number four or the same rib articulates with the same number of the vertebra t4 uh, uh, the rib by its inferior demi facet and the vertebra by its upper demi facet that's large and we know that in the rib this one is the large right okay now what we have else other than body and demi facets right upper and lower Oh yeah, we have a transversal process because typical thoracic vertebra has to articulate with the rib through the transversal process as well. And so, yes, we know that there is transversal process, but at the end of transversal process here, there is um, what we call a facet. We call it transversal process facet or the facet of transverse process. This is for articulation with the articular part of the tubercle of the of the corresponding of the same corresponding number that means if this is um, vertebra number four so the rib uh, uh, so the rib number four guys should articulate here right this is number four so you know that you brickle of the rib you can go back in the lecture at the beginning you understand what i mean when i say the uh, articular um, uh, the tubercle the articular part of the tubercle articulates with the facet of transversal process with the same number right uh, 
Okay, what else? Look at the spine. The spine of the transverse process here is like long. And here also, if I would raise this and I will show you, here is the transverse process. So the transverse process is long and directed downward and backward. While if you look to the vertebral foramen here also, you will see it's like circular. If you go up in the cervical vertebrae, it's like a triangle mainly in shape if you go to the lumbar you will also kind of um, triangular but the the vertebral foramen of the thoracic vertebra is like circular and small now look at the superior articular process this is the superior articular process like a satellite right so they are directed directed backward and laterally look at it here backward and laterally but the inferior articular processes they are opposite they directed not backward they directed forward and medially on both sides right so this is these are the characteristics of the typical uh, thoracic uh, vertebrae now why the the first thoracic vertebra and the last four thoracic vertebrae are atypical. Okay, let us come to the T1. This is the T1. Ah, it has not upper and lower. This is T1. Huh? Why? You look, the body has not upper and lower demi facets. No, the body has complete circular facet and the lower demi facets we are okay with the lower demi facet but it should be here typically you know it should be like demi facet not complete why you remember the first rib and we mentioned that the first rib this is the first rib if you go back in this lecture and this is the head of the first rib and the head of the first rib has not because you know it should be it should be two demi facets but the first rib has just only one facet on its head. That's why also it's atypical. Anyway, the facet, the circular facet of the first rib articulates with this complete facet of the T1, right? And you know, typically, typically it should be the rib, you know, the rib should articulate with the same vertebra and the vertebra above it. But in this case, the first rib articulates, it has just one facet. So what it has to do it has just to articulate with the complete facet that matches its uh, facet on its head that's why the t1 vertebra has one complete facet and demi facet now the demi facet here is for what uh if this is vertebra number t1 and here is the um vertebra let us say t2 that means the t2 say it has a demi facet here right upper demi uh, facet and you know it's typical right t2 is typical from 2 to 8 they are typical vertebrae right anyway that means the second rib that comes here you know this is the second rib and we mentioned that the rib should articulate with the same vertebra and the vertebra above it so it has two demi facets here so demi facets so one with the t1 and the second one with the t2 uh, right now to the last four uh, vertebrae why they are uh, as we mentioned atypical so let us start let us divide them into uh, thoracic uh, vertebrae number 9 and 10 and 11 and 12 so uh, we got idea about t1 now to uh, let us uh, uh, see why thoracic vertebra number 9 and 10. For example, let us have a look to the thoracic vertebra number 9. Yes, it has body and everything, process and so forth, and yes, but here the body has only just superior demi facet. Where is the inferior demi facet? Oh, there is no inferior demi facet. Why? You know that uh the the rib number we have uh rib number 10 
Ah, that means there is no location for rib number um, 10 to articulate here because we know that each rib articulates with the same number of the vertebra and with the vertebra above it. That means, let us back again to the thoracic vertebra uh, number 9. So it has just superior demi facet. It's for what? For rib number 9. This is the rib number 9 that has two demi facets, the inferior one, two. This is rib number 9. So the inferior demi facet of the rib articulates with the superior demi facet of the same number of the vertebra and the Demi facet of the rib, the upper demi facet of the rib articulates with the vertebra above it, right? You you know this is T8, right? And this is why T uh, uh, T9, I mean thoracic vertebra number nine is um, uh, atypical. Okay, what about T10? T10, you remember what uh, what are typical ribs? Let me remind you that typical ribs from 3 to 9. That means, that means rib number 10 is atypical. It is not typical. Why? Because the head of it has only one complete facet. It's not two facets. No. The rib number 10 has only one complete facet. It's for what? Ah, it's just for articulation with this complete facet on the T10, thoracic vertebra number 10. So that means thoracic vertebra number 10 has only just one complete circular facet and it has no inferior demi facet, right? That's why it is, which is for articulation with the facet of the rib number uh, 10. Okay, what about the thoracic vertebra number 11 and the thoracic vertebra number 12? Uh, the body also similar similar to the T10. You remember T10 is just one facet. Also, the T11 has only a complete single facet for articulation with the same uh, number, you know, uh, rib number 11. And that has only also one facet on its head. And also the number 12, you know, rib number 12 also has only one facet for articulation with the single facet on T12. That means thoracic vertebrae number 11 and 12, they only just has, they only just have, sorry, uh, one facet on their uh, body. And look, there is no, there is a transversal process yet, but there is no facets on the, um, the transverse uh, processes uh, there, right, for articulation with the uh, same rib, right? So that, uh, guys, about the uh, thoracic uh, typical and atypical thoracic uh, vertebrae.